My name is Vika. I live in Taula with my husband Alfredo. He is a doctor, so I know myself and my family will be healthy. But I am still worried about our future. Let me tell you why. My father is one of the oldest fishermen in Vavao. Our family has always had fish and plenty of food from the sea while I was growing up. Now my husband goes fishing with my father. My father has been fishing for more than 60 years. He will tell you what he thinks about the sea. Then you will know why I am worried about the future. Before 1934, I used a Tongan boat called the Pau Pau. I used to go very far to do my diving. The fishing I used to do, and I like it very much, is diving with a spear. And it was so beautiful. I caught plenty of fish, big fish, many fish. I go for the whole day. When I return, it is still day, and my Pau Pau is full of fish. In 1962, I began to notice that my favorite fishing places had fewer and fewer fish. They were much smaller than before. Even until today, the big fish are gone from those areas. It's much harder to get the fish today than it was before. Soon I had to give up my spear and my mast and begin using a fishing line. It was a little better with the fishing line, but I still had to go very far to catch enough fish for my family to eat. The coral, where I used to go and catch my fish, was the house of the fish. Now, the coral is gone and when I go there, there are no more fish. They are very far from there. I think, perhaps ten years from now, the fish will be very far away from anywhere near the islands and the villages. A boat will have to go all day to catch enough fish for the people to eat for dinner. So this is why I'm worried about the future. If someone in my family gets sick, my husband, who is a doctor, can help them. But what can we do if the sea is growing sick? We should listen to another doctor, the Honorable Dr. Ma'afu Tupo, who is the Minister of Lands, Survey and Natural Resources, and who also comes from my village. What can we do to restore our marine resources to their former health? It is a problem for everyone, not just commercial fishermen, but for each man or woman who needs to find food to eat for their family. Of course, some of the problem is simply too many fishermen. But as you will learn from this video, the sea can support us if we understand more about how God has fashioned the life in our sea. Today we have the technology to destroy God's creation. If we do, if we allow greed and ignorance to spoil his work, surely our families will suffer. If, however, we work together and learn to help the sea grow and prosper, then all of us will slowly return to health and grace. We will always enjoy food from the sea for our families. Many people go swimming or walking, fishing or playing on the coral reefs and never give a thought about the coral itself. The coral that builds the reef is actually a living creature. Like any other kind of life, coral can be healthy or it can be sick. Corals can also die. The corals grow very slowly. Here is a close-up of a coral growing. The camera made it look like the coral was growing fast but it really took one quarter of a year for the coral to grow only one centimeter. Some corals need a whole year to grow one centimeter. So a big coral head like this one is hundreds of years old, while a healthy coral reef, such as this one, represents thousands of years of very slow coral growth. When we look at a healthy coral reef, we see there are many little fishes living in and around its branches. The coral makes a home for the fish to protect them especially when the fish are very young. The little fish also help the corals. They eat tiny sea animals and plants that drift over the reef from the open sea. The fish use these little creatures for their own food, but the fish wastes are nicely packaged into little pellets that drop down onto the corals. 
The pellets contain fertilizers, like bird droppings, and the corals eat these to feed to the plants that live inside their skins. We must learn to see the little fish as part of a living net that catches food from the sea to build the coral reefs and slowly, over the years, grow the many different kinds of sea creatures. Many different kinds of sea creatures, like these squid, live in and around the living coral reefs. They all depend on each other, all work together in a most beautiful example of harmony and peace. We too have been part of this beneficial community for more than 3,600 years. Until very recently, most of the things we did on the islands and the coral reefs were part of the overall plan of life. We took food from the sea, but not too much. And we took it without harming the small fishes and corals and their plants. We were in harmony with the coral reefs. But something has gone wrong, and today many of the corals are dead. Look at this dead reef. See how few fishes there are. There is nowhere for them to live. And when there are few fish, the corals do not get enough fertilizer, so will not regrow for a very long time. This coral reef was broken to pieces by fishermen in 1981. The video you are seeing, however, was made in 1993, 12 years after the fishermen broke the coral to chase the fish into their net. Now look at this live reef near to the dead one. See the many kinds of fish which one will provide food for our families? The live one or this dead one? Ask yourself, when you look at this dead and broken area, don't you see something ugly, something poor, something sick, something sad? It's a true loss to the people of Avao when live coral is broken and killed. And when you look at this living coral reef, do you not feel beauty, something rich, filled with life, something good and beneficial to everyone? God has written his laws in the hearts and minds of men. We know what is good by those words written inside of us. When we see beauty, we know it is good. When we see destruction, we know it is evil. We know what is right. If you see someone breaking the coral or harming the beauty of God's plan for the sea, tell them that they are spoiling the goodness and wealth that the Lord has given us. They harm everyone if they fail to show proper respect to God's word. And everyone will suffer when God's words of beauty and harmony are destroyed, whether this is in the sea, in the garden, or in the home. We need a code of ethics for the treatment of our marine resources. Ethics are not laws, but ways of living that everyone agrees are proper. To behave unethically is always to create trouble for our community, our families, and ourselves. We have a code of ethics for our gardens. Everyone knows it's wrong to harm the health of the soils or to damage the soil or otherwise make our land unproductive. The time has come now to apply this same thinking to our coral reefs. And I suggest, one, the health of the sea is everyone's responsibility. Two, anyone who damages the coral reefs hurts the food resources for all the people of Tonga. Three, anyone who fails to help coral reefs fails to help their community. Let's look at some of the things we should and should not be doing. We should not break the live coral, not with bush knives, poles, hammers. We should not even walk on them. When we break the coral, it can become infected. The infection spreads from the broken part to the whole coral. When the coral dies, there is no place for the young fish, crabs, or other sea creatures to live. Dead rocks on the reef top can be turned over to find shells underneath, but because many shells and fish lay their eggs underneath these dead rocks, always put them back in their original position as quickly as possible. If you don't, you may kill thousands and thousands of baby fish and shells. 
Don't break the larger dead rocks into smaller pieces because if you do, they will quickly wash away with the waves and will no longer be there as a place for the sea creatures to lay eggs and live. They will no longer be there for you to look under them for food. Do not break or overturn the live corals. Leave them alone and teach boys and girls not to break them or walk on them. Fishermen should slap the water by hand or with a paddle to chase the fish into their nets. Never break the coral to scare the fish or it will ruin the fishing for many years. It is wrong to kill sea creatures when they are spawning or guarding their eggs. After they finish, they can be taken. But if they are taken during spawning, there will be no young the following year. Female octopus guard their eggs and blow water over them. If a diver kills the female octopus when she is guarding her eggs, all of the eggs will die too. It is also foolish to take very young sea creatures before they have the opportunity to grow up. Would you pick a watermelon when it is only the size of your hand? If we kill our pigs before any of them grow old enough to have young, we will soon be without pigs. The same is true of our fish, giant clams, lobsters, and crabs. Let them grow to full size before taking them. The size of the fish and lobsters tell us when we have taken too many from a reef. If only very small ones are left, it is time to leave that part of the reef alone until the sea creatures have grown larger. This is very important. And when we see fishermen coming home with very small fish and lobsters, the more responsible people of the village should tell them to change their place of fishing or the kind of fishing they are doing so the reef can grow. Some sea creatures should not be taken at all. The triton shell is a good example. Tritons eat the crown of thorn starfish. The crown of thorn starfish eats living coral. The tritons are the policemen of the reef. They control the starfish. If we take the tritons to sell to tourists, the starfish are free to kill the coral and ruin the fishing. How we fish is very important. Using poisons kills the corals and baby fish, leaving the reefs empty. Even what we do on land affects the sea. When mud washes into the ocean, it smothers the corals and kills the young fish. Plants growing on the land keep the soil from running off to the sea. The soil is, of course, much more valuable in the garden than lost to the sea. Roads are much better when they do not wash away into the sea, too. Mangrove areas are especially important to the coral reefs. They help protect them against mud and silt. But even more, they are a nursery where many species of sea life spend the early part of their lives. The leaves of the mangroves are an important source of food for sea creatures, and the branches of the mangroves are nesting sites for seabirds. The seabirds fly far out to sea to gather food, and when they sit on the mangrove branches, their droppings fertilize the valuable sea creatures we use for food. We also use the mangrove wood for fuel and traditional medicines. Killing mangrove trees would result in the loss of much of the food from the sea. Seagrasses are also very important to the coral reefs and many of the sea creatures begin their lives in the grass. Turtles eat the seagrass, as do many fish. The seagrass helps trap silt and mud and keep the coral reef areas alive. We must not cover our seagrass beds with too much silt or poison them with weed killers used on the shore. Many of our traditional methods of fishing were very effective and non-damaging to the resources. Octopus lures are highly efficient, much more efficient than trying to catch the octopus by hand or with a spear. Done properly, the octopus lure will catch many more octopus than a diver can. In addition, the female octopus, when protecting her eggs, will ignore the lure and hatch out her young to keep the fishery going strong. Line fishing is always less damaging to the reef than spear fishing. A good line fisherman will catch many more fish than a spear fisherman. Young fishermen should be taught how to catch fish using lines and to catch octopus using lures. Tonga, especially Vava'o, 
has already begun improving its marine life with the introduction of its giant clam sanctuaries. Keeping a broodstock of valuable sea creatures is as useful as keeping a broodstock of chickens or pigs or any other animal or plant. Broodstocks may be kept of seashells, sea cucumbers, or even many different species all mixed together. Those are some of the ways we can prevent further damage to our coral reefs or even improve them. First, don't break the live coral. Second, when you turn over dead rocks, be sure to put them back the way you found them. Three, leave the small sea creatures alone to grow large. Four, don't take every one. Five, never harm a female guarding or carrying her eggs. Six, leave the triton to guard the coral. Seven, prevent our soil from washing into the sea. Eight, do not use pesticides or herbicides anywhere near the sea. Nine, rely on line fishing and non-destructive reef fishing techniques. 10, set up brood stocks of valuable sea creatures to increase recruitment. What if we do nothing? What if we are unable to take action to stop the decline and loss of our valuable and much loved coral reefs and the food we get from them? What if we do nothing and keep on breaking the coral and overfishing the reefs until there is not much left? If cash is more important than loving one another and working together, if we are going to be people who take what we can for ourselves and forget about the future, there is little hope for the creatures of the sea that share these islands with us. There is little hope for us. We will have failed the test that God has presented us. If, however, we treasure God's creations, if we respect our families, if we are willing to work together in harmony according to God's plan, then we can and we will do what is needed to improve our future and the future of our islands and seas. I ask you then to decide today, now, in your heart before God, to work hand in hand to improve our lives. It is your personal responsibility, and you can't give the responsibility away or expect someone to work a miracle to make the sea suddenly produce more food for everyone. God has already provided the miracle. It's up to you to treat this miracle with the respect it deserves.